You, of course, hosted the Tom Brady roast, Mm -hmm. um, which is a success. It was entertaining. It was very funny. He, of course, later came out and said that he regretted doing it. Mm -hmm. When you hear something like that, where do you go and what do you do? Um, When he says he regretted doing it, I don't... I don't think he's referring to the. I don't think he's referring to the. The it. He means the the, some of the jokes yes. that he I received. Think, I think. Yes. I think. What he's referring to is saying, you know, I could have tapered it a little differently, saying or having a conversation pre, of like, guys, let's go and do this, but let's not touch. This, or this, and I think like. Um, the idea of going all in and just saying, fuck it, I don't care, because I know the world would love to see me being on the receiving end of shit because I'm Tom Brady and I've been at the highest stage yeah, level of my life. So I think, it was, I think it was that. But it also, like, what it did for comedy um, and, like, our climate of sensitivity, I think was necessary and valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, although I can side with time and see where he's coming from and just him wanting to protect, you know, the idea of family and the conversation attached to that, mm-hmm. you know, that's probably where that's coming from. And, you know, I'm not privy to whatever he dealt with after. So I know like his response and saying something about it was a result to possibly that. Um, but that thing made people comfortable with like the concept of a joke being a joke. And it just being that. It's a joke, right? It's a joke. Hard-hitting, fun jokes. Everybody up there got hit. Everybody got hit. But those comics got an opportunity to show what makes them special. There was not a comic that touched that microphone that did not show that they were a sharp, witted talent. That's the whole idea of a roast. I get to take a moment to take a pen and a pad and attach it to you and your life. And I'm going to be as witty and clever as I can, but at the same time, get some oohs and ahs. That's what the roast is about. And the roast was like a forgotten thing because of the climate. People are like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Can't say that. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey, now hold on now. <laughs> that way it'll ease up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. That, like, it was no holes barred. And the reason why I told him I would host it um, I said, like, you need somebody, A, that's going to gain the attention of the masses, but that it can also set the tone and create the shock value and shock factor that everybody else is going to want people to be okay with. So if you really dissect the rose, I went out there and I made people comfortable with the uncomfortable at the top of it. I hit time first. I hit the audience. I hit the stage. I hit the people. I did it in a way where it was still likable and fun. It didn't come off malicious. Fuck you, Tom. It's, I'm, I'm playing. Yeah. And you got hit. I'm play- Yes. But I set the stage for people to go, oh, and laugh. But you got comfortable with hearing it. In the beginning, I say, fuck you, Tom, so many times. 20 times. It's, I say it so <laughs> many times, but I said it to get the audience and the people at home in a place of, oh, all right, well, I'm... Okay, all right, all right, all right. You done said it a lot. Mm-hmm. So now your shoulders are no longer tense and you're no longer like, Ugh. you're watching it and you're laughing. And we ended up doing a live broadcast for three hours. Unheard of. Unheard of. I, I love the moment. I love Tom. I understand why Tom came back and said what he said, but I understand where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. And I think when he says that, he just knows that he could have policed it a little better if he wanted to, right? But also not being aware of where people were going to go and how they were going to come in. I was a learning lesson. Yeah. So moving forward, if we're roasting somebody and there's like something crazy that they don't want, then it's just a conversation beforehand and people just go around it. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I do hope to see more. Yeah. Like more you, athlete roasts. I think you, you, to follow Tom, I would do it again, but I need somebody at that, at that level, at that yeah. thing. And... Somebody that's okay with coming in and hearing the lay of the land. Like, that's where the fun of it comes from. Yeah. 
I mean, Nikki, Nikki, <laughs> Nikki told me she said she was amazing. She by says, the way, Kevin Hart. I know she said, "Oh my God, Kevin gets up. He works so hard, so hard every day. He gets up at like four a.m. to make another shitty movie. I don't like him. I don't. I don't like them. None of them." <laughs> She's like. She was like a star in that. Great. She was amazing. She was great, yeah. but it's fun. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? It's not fun laughing at other people if you can't laugh at yourself. For sure. I laugh at myself first. So, shout out to Tom Brady for taking the stage, for doing it, and making history, you know. Uh, the numbers were insane. Insane, the numbers that we put up on Netflix yeah. for that broadcast. So, uh, I'm glad I did it. I love him. Love everybody that did it. And I think the world needs more of it. Sure. Get back to understanding the idea and concept of a joke. And let's stop letting the joke stand as the, the thing to live by or operate off of. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Playing or the concept of playing should be just that. 